but as many are finding out, Edomites, the descendants of Esau, actually made up the Roman Empire. As a matter of fact, the Jewish Encyclopedia also states that the name Edom is used by the Talmudists for the Roman Empire, and they applied to Rome every passage of the Bible referring to Edom or to Esau. Where is Edom today? Esau's land was called Edom. Edom is the country of Jordan and the place of Petra, the city in the mountain. Look at the architecture of the photo at Petra, which is Edom. Notice how it resembles Rome along with many of the structures all over the world. Our sports stadiums resemble the Colosseum. Even modern day sports are in fact derived from Rome. European systems of government are set up like the early Roman Empire, having both Senate and the Republic, local government and other things as well. Esau's descendants are called Edomites. Later, they're called Idumeans. Idumea or Edom in Hebrew was the region south of Judea, originally inhabited by the reputed descendants of Jacob's brother Esau. Edom was periodically subjected to Judea under David and Solomon the Maccabees, homeland of the House of Herod. There were no natural boundaries between Idumea and Judea, so the borders were always in flux. According to the Jewish Encyclopedia, 1925 edition, in 163 BC, Judas Maccabeus conquered the Edomite territory for a time. They, the Edomites, were again subdued by John Hyrcanus, about 125 BC, by whom they were forced to observe Israelite rites and laws of the Torah. They were then incorporated with the tribe of Judah, and their country was called by the Greeks and Romans, Idumea. With Antipater the Idumean began the Idumean dynasty that ruled over Judea till its conquest by the Romans. From this time, the Idumeans ceased to be a separate people. Therefore, Edom later became known as the Roman Empire. With the sacking of Rome by the barbarians came the mingling or spoiling of Esau's seed, thus fulfilling the prophecy of Jeremiah 49.10. But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. The Goths were Ukraine, Romania, Moldova, Belarus, Poland, and Scandinavia. The Saxons were Germany, the Dutch, the English, Northern Albania, Great Britain, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. The Franks were France. The Lombards were Italy. The Vandals were East Germany which were known for their senseless destruction, which is where we get the term Vandalism. Vandalism is the behavior attributed originally to the Vandals by the Romans in respect of culture, ruthless destruction or spoiling of anything beautiful or venerable. These kingdoms all branched off into other kingdoms such as Canada, America, Caucasus, Siberia, Central Asia, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Ireland, and maybe others. No, together these kingdoms all make up the rule of the entire world. Esau and his kingdoms, Edom, will be ruling at the end of the world, and Jacob will rule afterward in the millennium under the Messiah, Yeshua. Many Bible scholars teach that the Edomites no longer exist, but scripture clearly shows them in the last days. Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return, and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Many people use this scripture to claim that Edom was exterminated, but this is not what the passage implies. It states very clearly that the Most High hated Esau and laid his mountains and heritage to waste. But in the next verse, it states, Edom saith, We are impoverished but we will return and build the desolate places. At the time of Malachi's prophecy, Edom was a wasteland between 445 and 432 BC. How do we know this? The Most High said, I laid, past tense, his mountains and his heritage to waste. Edom's response was, we will return and build the desolate places. 
So if Edom was completely destroyed, how could they say that they'd return? And why would scripture give reference to Edom still being around in the last days? The Most High's response was, they shall build, but I will throw down. This is a future prophecy that Edom will return and rebuild, but the Most High will destroy his kingdom in his final judgment against Edom in the last days. For Esau, Edom is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. 2 Estras, chapter 6, verse 9, the Apocrypha. The prophecy in Isaiah, chapter 63, verses 1 through 6, confirms that this is indeed what will happen. Who is this that cometh from Edom, with dyed garments from Bozrah? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people was none with me, for I will tread them in my anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. Happen. When the Messiah returns, where does he go, and what does he do? He goes to every place where the descendants of Esau, the Edomites, have set up their kingdoms and slaughters them for their perpetual violence against Jacob. He treads the winepress and his wrath is accomplished. Further proof is in the book of Daniel, which states that in the future,